Hello, and welcome to the Immortal Gates of Pyrocast. I'm ZK. Today we have a beautiful match on Fool's Bay, one of the newer maps that just came out in this latest build. Well, it has been a few builds, but we can just admire the beauty of this map on Nuoth, the ocean surrounding everything at this Fool's Bay. Of course, the moonlight shimmering in the distance as well. And oh, we may as well introduce our two players on the ice team. We have Lightforger playing as all. Zalai Drago is playing as Mala as we have a double Aru team. On their side, we have Santa Claus as Orzu and Stefano also, I believe, as Orzu. So let's talk a bit about these factions, right? We have here uh, Aru, who is more about ranged units that have a different tech tree that allows them to change tech very quickly and to go into different things pretty fast. Their first unit, the Mass Hunter, is great at just getting out the right, uh, out of the map. It's pretty comparable to if you've played StarCraft to Marine to Marines as their first units. They have a Marauder, eh, not quite a Marauder, more like a Roach-like unit that's good at doing the front lining for the for their faction, as well as Resident that as, as, uh, that's a good siege tank. They also have Mutalisk, <laughs> Mutalisk an analog in the front. So a lot of great units on their side. On their side we have Croft that's more like Brood War Protoss, where they have a lot of strong, beefy units that already dish out the damage all across the map. You won't have as many units with playing Croft. You know, you don't necessarily need a lot when you have the power of angels at your back. Yeah, that's basically it. Some other fun things about the Mordo. You have two main resources. We have, of course, Alloy at the front here, and we have Aether for more tech-heavy units. The third resource you can get once per about three seconds. You get it just jumps up. You also get it by killing these pyro camps. So the pyro camps are a few units, and once you kill them, a drop of pyro will, will go on the map, and whoever picks it up will get that pyro. And we can see some people prefer heading out, getting those units very early to get on the map and collect that pyro to stop their opponents from getting them. Jago is generally a player of that sort who really likes getting that map control early, getting the pyro as fast as possible. What their opponents, are, what their opponents Santa and Tommaso, prefer to go for the very fast expands, getting those bases up and going for economy instead. Uh, but of course the fight is going on here. Santa going for this base and there's not enough mass hunters to really deny this. And Santa is lucky enough to get a first power camp. We see the drop. There you go. The drop. He was right on it. So he gets 25 power from the get-go. There is side. At least Lightforger will get his or very own first power camp on the sides here. And later on at the 10th minute, there will be a big, I guess a boss monster of some type that both teams can fight over. It's a tug of war. And the first team to do 4,000 uh, 4, more damage to their opponents will get 100 power. So really worth it for any team that wants to do it. A monster will respawn every five minutes. While well, these power camps respawn after two minutes of uh, death. Ooh, that mass hunter barely survives the shot, but oh man, it's so close right now. But let's be fair, it doesn't have the biggest importance. Keeping Santa busy while the mass hunter is, is going to die. There's like, we have to look at the units he went for. Bloodbounds, assassin type units. So every unit has a type. This one's the assassin, just wants to jump on units, kill them, and then run away. Aru also has the particularity of having cast from blood. So while it is a spellcaster, once it's out of mana, it can use its own HP to use it to cast its spells. That can be very powerful to get out of those sticky situations. On the other side, we have Tommaso, who has the Zephyr. Zephyr has a teleport ability called Windstep, very alike to the StarCraft II's Blink Stalkers. Allow them just to just uh, blink away from danger or to blink on top of stuff. Oh yeah, there's the first blink that comes down. He wants to go into his opponent's face. I don't see it coming. Of course, Santa does have his Zephyrus here, so he's already kind of in position. The first blood bound sees it coming. Doesn't even get a single kill, but these are in better position. Santa running away immediately. Doesn't want to lose anything. And that first blood bound, a great play from Drago. Getting out of position, and yeah, teleports out. Uses a bit of HP to do it. And on the other side, Drago being a pest as much as he can, using his blood bound to jump on the opponent units. But so far, has gotten very little damage for his troubles. Keeping his opponent from mining is still decent, but he wants more for this. These are expensive units. I already lost one of them there. And we'll lose another one as he jumps on top of units. And yeah, that was opening build from Drago. Behind this, he did expand. It wasn't all in. It, was, it wasn't an all in. It was pretty standard. Well, not really standard. He went even for third base. So he's just hoping for his opponents not to attack too, too quickly into him. Same time, Lightforger went for Frums. Kind of like mutilus analogs, very quick units, Harris that can just run around the map really quickly. And, you know, get a few kills here. There's only one mode left, so I gotta assume he got a lot of kills on that. So, 
Great play from Lightforger. And behind this, going for this special base on the side that has two Ether Extractors, which definitely isn't the norm. Most bases only have one, and some don't even have any. Which isn't quite as useful. Uh, we see right now as well, every single player has a good amount of Pyre. That Pyre can be used to place these defensive towers that also heal up your units. So going pushing them forward means you have a quicker healing spot. Uh, you can also use it to infuse your units to make them go just a bit faster. There's a lot of different utilities you can go for in these different fights if you want to. Prums coming in, decide there's not that many Zephyrs. I'm not sure this is a fight you want to take though. Good focus fire from Tommaso. Gets the first Prum and the Prums will be forced to run away. Damages some, but you don't want to lose your unit for nothing there. Lightforger running away and has to regroup with the rest of his army. And here come the Whitewood Reapers, another assassin type unit. I can really dish out the damage quickly. But they have very little HP, so need to be careful. They do have a skill shot, though. If they hit it, they become invisible. And if the opponent does not have any type of detection, which Tommaso does not, they were, will just get annihilated. There we go. Get invisible for six seconds. Kill the first zone control. Go for the second one. And will be time to run away after the six seconds are up. Uh, does he want to keep pushing? Yeah, Light, Lightforger really taking advantage of his invisibility here. Tommaso will need to build detectors. Sure, the flying teapots uh, so far as a placeholder unit. Uh, let's see what they're up to. Okay, more Whitewood Reapers coming in from Lightforger. A pretty new unit, so while these are experienced playtesters, they haven't gotten to play with it so much. And here it's only Mass Hunters against this big Croft army. They can they can pull back as much as they want, but at the end of the day, I have to be careful. They use their, their offering a stim-like ability. It gives them extra speed and damage on their first few attacks. And they get the last few... Fuse Antares, and that's what you want to do. Get as much damage as you can. Same time, Santa expanding to the forefront. Expanding forward and getting that very important forward tower. That will be a good spot for his units to go back and heal at. On the other side, Santa wants that base to be attacked. He knows there's something there. And he pings his ally about it. Uh, let's see what type of army. Drago still mostly on Mass Hunters. Spotbound didn't work so well and has Frums of his own at this point. Okay, more Mass Hunters and, and Zakal, so more of an infantry-based based attack. And on Lightforger's side, going for Bone Stalkers, the analog of the Mass Hunter. So, something else to mention about Immortal. There are factions and there are sub-factions. So, Mal and Zoe are both Aru, but there are different sub-factions, as in different Immortals. And what the sub-factions do is they change out two of the base units. We see them right here. The first one is the Mass Hunter with the base Marine-like unit. It's changed with a Bone Stalker, a unit can turn invisible. So, getting stealth and special stealth attack on, uh, on their special abilities. Their unit is here. The Whitewood Reaper replaces the Bloodbound. Bloodbound is more like a blink DT. You can just jump on top of his opponents without getting invisibility. Whereas the Whitewood Reaper have a skill shot. And once they hit it, they get invisible and can just jump on top of the, their opponents and do twice as much damage on those marked units. Uh, other differences with Immortals. Ooh, a 2 on coming here. And a Mark Parade coming down as well. Units stuck in there. Get extra damage, you'll need to run out to not get all the damage, but that's not enough army. It's a two on one. Santa is forced to run away as Ice does not want to give up. They are still running forward, getting as many kills as they want, and perhaps denying this forward base from his opponent. Santa, Santa would love to get this base up, but at the very least, he has this one already up and running. His opponents don't know that quite yet. And here, the red type comes down. One of the immortal abilities allows to heal your units by sacrificing one of your own. And of course, that's the other part of Immortals. They have special abilities. Pyre is used for setting up towers, getting and getting those special Immortal abilities. And one of them is Empire Unbroken. It goes down here, reduces all damage on these buildings by quite a lot. And Santa wants to defend this base. Puts down a pillar. His own ultimate ability comes down, gives a well-needed damage boost to all his units. But Tommaso is not to be left alone. He is coming in with Heaven's Aegis. This base will be defended as they push back their opponents. But Ice is coming in with Resistance at the back. There are Siege Tanks Analogs coming in and dishing the damage. We see how quickly those Zephyrs are getting evaporated from this. And the Aklux here, Invisible Siege Line Reavers. Reaver-like units are attacking everything. And this base from Santa might once again get forfeit. As the Aklux are doing... Heavy damage on the buck, but Tommaso has enough units here. He can keep pushing, but as he want to, the siege line is set up with those two resonants in the back. Does he have enough? He is pushing forward the base, still alive, and the tower is still giving enough protection. Drago is about to get routed. Great play from Tommaso, coming to the help of his teammate, and just barely holding on. But does he? Ice, once again, the reinforcements coming in. The siege line is powerful. It was four resonants pushing the line forward. And putting down the mortal ability of Bloodwell, which gives which gives some root way to 
the ground cover for uh, for Aru. That gives the resident a bit of extra range and a bit faster shield regeneration. So Santa coming in as fast as he can to help defend. <laughs> and behind all this, getting the Pyra Camp. And Lightforger happily taking the base with that gives a double the E for income here. And Santa wants his face, but this is such an entrenched position from Drago. They really need to go in and go strong. The Ostrike comes in, deals heavy damage, but it's not enough. There's not enough units here for Santa. He needs, to re he needs to regroup and find a better position to attack into this. Hopefully with his ally at the back. But so far this is looking like a bad fight for Santa. As he's trying and trying to survive. Uh, but this base finally goes down. And Santa is back to only two bases while his opponents are both on four and three bases. Tommaso of course. Dev has his four bases as well. So Tommaso should be able to help his ally if he can. Uh, seems like Ice is ready to reposition and get out find another place to attack and then a mark break comes down for life order for these units to reposition not take that double damage while marked and yeah you don't want to attack in this the arc Mother special ability gives damage reduction to everything and here it comes Ooh, what a great osprey hitting so many units on that shot and yet Ostra, the other shard barely survives here another mark break a very cheap immortal ability and all these units will take so much damage going forward Really need to be careful of all those Aklooks dealing their dishing out the damage at the back. And here they come. And, and here comes the final push, really. They are still trying to survive. Tommaso wants to help his ally, wants Santa to be able to reestablish another base. The one at the back is still blocked by rocks, so that won't be possible for at least the near future. And the Aklook RB here is very powerful. Fire needs to find another way to deal with this push. They can't keep attacking into it in trench position with free blood wells that give healing to his own units. It's not the way to go. This is such an entrenched position. Oh, and there we go. The the god appears in the middle of the map. We want to kill this, the ancient relic. Once killing, get a hundred pyre. And here we go. The attack happens. They start going for it. And we see the tug of war dying very quickly as fire is not ready to help defend this. However, fire sees an upper opportunity. They can see a few bone stalkers get rid of them. And the ancient was killed by Team Ice, giving them 50 pyre each. We can see how much pyre they have 140. Santa still have 180, hasn't been using it so far. But once he does, it can be a difference maker for sure. And yeah, the, those bone stalkers want to see everything, need to know, need to see what their opponent is, go, is up to. Uh, so destroying the rocks here, I like it. Opening a path for to go for a full surround if they can ever afford it. And look at the army value though. Santa is so far behind his opponents. Near 6k in army value. And only 90 supply as well. Tommaso attacking alone against... Uh, uh, deciding to go on a 1 on 2. But no, Santa goes from the back. The all strikes are powerful and go down. Reign of Blood goes on to Drago. He wants to win this fight. And at this point, Santa, does he want to commit? He's still committing strongly on this. But the act looks at the back. The resonance, everything is working against him. This army is so powerful from ice. Tommaso has absolvers, but they're not seen in the right position. They are not close to the army. Reign of Blood is over. This might be the opportunity they need, but... The power is still here for Santa, but is it enough? Is that enough to change the fight as, as the, well, the army value is just so low compared to your opponents? Tommaso taking a fifth base at this point. Uh, it's good on him to keep expanding, though. You need to have the expansion levels to keep going up and dealing with your opponent. And yeah, there we go. Santa finally taking a third base, hit it in the back. As obviously, he's not able to take the ones at the front. Uh, okay, uh, Drago sacrificing a few units, trying to get a bit more damage done. But on either side, it was a two-pronged attack. It was really just to distract Santa while his main army is heading for Tommaso's base on the west side. And here comes a root. Units cannot move. And a Mark Prey goes down on the Absolvers. Absolvers taking extremely, an extreme amount of damage as Tommaso's army is routed. He has more army coming in from the back. The production, the production is here, but man, the position for, for Ice is, is really, really too strong. Tommaso tries to go head down the base and loses his external base, his mineral, his alloy only. Uh, but all those siege units here. The Sharo sending another Ostra in the middle of them, the resonance. They heavy casualties, heavy damage. And yeah, hitting right in the center here, those units are not long for this world. And fire is contained back to their starting bases, only five bases left. Luckily, Tommaso did take this base on the right side. And this base that Santa had finally gone up for his third base is completely is getting completely destroyed on the side. And here come the first units. 
man. Even the Ancient is back. They can kill the Ancient to get even more power to go for their next push if they desire. Uh, Fire has no way to really defend this, to really help defend this push. However, of course, a lot of damage going down for it. So this could be the opportunity they need to, to deal some damage while it's taking damage. But they are too little too late. The moats are coming in as Santa is going all in. He uses his last remaining units. We'll do a bit of a meat shield. Of course, meat shield is powerful. Jack looks at the back. Over there, splash damage. Focus right out that Magi. Magi had no chance. As all the workers are now dead. Tommaso's base on the left side. There's nothing left. It, it, it will survive as, life, as Drago loses units. But behind all of this, uh, I don't, oh, he might actually be able to take out this army. He has a nice position here. Uh, Life Forger finding the finding a good way out. Looking at the backside, and here comes the base. <laughs> no more mining going on for Santa, but there was nothing left to be mined anyways. This base still has a bit of mining left. Yeah, now it's just a matter of position. The map belongs to Ice. And Fire do not realize how far behind they are. Or Santa does. He's only at 200, of course. But Tommaso's army is still there. It's still quite powerful. If he can get the right fight, he might be able to win. Uh, but these are not the best units for comebacks. That's are pretty straight-up fighters. And the complexity of his opponent's army is just a bit higher than his with the Aklux and the Resonance. Dealing heavy damage turn back what Drago can do on the front lining and ensure that no damage comes from it. Santa, what's next, Ancient? Not sure one Zephyr will be quite enough to take it out. I Fortru behind all this, simply expanding on the map. <laughs> Much was left to say as Drago, expanding on the bottom right, wants that special base. And they seem ready, poised to take the next fight. Tommaso tried to expand here, going for a full surround. The full 360 no scope is coming. And. Life Forger comes in a bit faster than the opponent, the Mark Play comes down, and so many units will take double damage for the next fight. Oh my god, those Aklux doing heavy damage. Here comes Drago, infuses units, we can see the the yellow uh, sprinkles coming in all around, the, the fireworks on all his units makes them attack so much faster. Speeder boys just pushing forward, attacking all the units, and the infuse comes down, but it's too little too late as Tommaso is routed back to his base, and there's nothing left to defend as the main base is eliminated. And their army are both are both sub one thousand army value. And yeah, uh, fire not quite ready to give up. Coming in forward with a few more zephyrs, heading for the very last extra last units. And yeah, he needs to win step out of this, but. The shots do not stop coming, and they will explode on him and take out Santa's very last units as. Oh, he tries to make a few more, but Rain of Blood comes in as they are heading up the hill to go for the very final push. Mark Prey comes down, forcing those units to head back or take double damage. A final pillar of Santa is here. The Dervish come in, but the Dervish come in to do a little bit of damage, but can't they do it? They try pushing forward, but the Aklux at the back, Aklux at the back, still dealing their damage. Aklux must be MVP of this map, always dealing damage, never able to ta get taken out. At this point, it's just a matter of fire GGing it out. Base is out, and there we go.